representative democracy and theocracy. Represent, representative democracy. Representative democracy. A representative democracy is a structure of government where officials are elected to represent groups of people. These officials then vote in policies, laws, and, and other items of government business on behalf of the people so that the general population doesn't need to vote on every separate issue as they would in a direct democracy. Power to the people. Democracy. People, rights, majority, voting, individualism, politics. These things are known as democracy. Representative democracy advantages. A representative democracy keeps governing simple. Democracy is a form of government where everyone has a voice. When it is employed directly, the cost of maintaining that democracy can be quite high. Every vote would require the participation of the entire electorate. Every assignment would be forced through a rigorous approval method that involves everyone by electing representatives to handle these affairs. Decisions happen faster. Actions can be implemented with lower costs. In return, the government becomes more responsive when society needs to access its resources. Everyone has a chance to participate. participate. As long as you are eligible to vote, then you get to participate in a representative democracy. Sometimes people feel like their votes don't count, especially if they find themselves in a minority position most of the time. But the ability, the ability to participate in the elections is not compromised. Compromised. If you can vote, then you're making your opinion be heard. It allows the government to react quickly. In an emergency situation, a representative democracy allows the government to act quickly to, to, to act quickly to respond. To act in an emergency. Sorry. Act quickly to respond to whatever potential threat may be in place. There isn't the need to put a vote to the rest of the public. The government officials can look at the situation, decide on the best course of action, and then take action. It encourages people to participate. When people know that they can. They can have their voice heard in their government. They are more likely to participate in the elections that are held. When there are important decisions to be made, more people show up to vote. It still gives power to the people. A government with this structure still relies on what the majority the people wanting a government um, wanting most circumstances. Each population center can send a representative to a representative to the government, which will provide them with a voice in how the government operated. Everyone benefits. Some people are highly engaged in the political, pr political process, 
within a representative democracy. Some people are not engaged with the process at all. From a, a governing standpoint, the activity levels do not matter. Every person receives the same level of re representation, whether they choose to vote or not vote. Representative democracy disadvantages. It is a system that invites corruption. Once elected, there is no reason to deliver on a campaign, campaign promise or attempt to better the economic circumstances of their home, restricted. Officials can work on their own career, career instead to create personal gains and it can be difficult to stop such an official. The voice of the people technically ends with the election. Once a representative democracy is elected, the voice that people have in their government is technically over. People can still write their elected officials, make appointments to speak with them, or conf confront them at town hall meetings, but they have no control over how the vote will actually be. 3. It focuses on the majority only. In a representative democracy, minority groups are only given enough air time enough air time to have their issues heard to so that heard so that a vote can be obtained. In many ways, minority groups are left to solve their own problems in this structure of government because they do not this structure of government because they do not have the voting power to overcome the majority. It isn't cheap to run a representative democracy. It is true that a representative democracy is cheaper to operate than a direct democracy. There are other forms of government, however, that are even cheaper than this one. Nearly two Two billion dollar is spent on presidential presidential elections in the United States, which is a constitutional, federal, representative democracy. Every four years, elections held for the Senate and the House of Representatives are multi-million dollar affairs. Then there are state and lo local elections that must be held as well. In total, when all elections are considered, Americans pay over uh, two trillion uh, two trillion dollars for their government. It takes a voice away from the minority. In representative democracy, legislation is based on the will of the majority and means the voice of the minority who heard is often discarded. That can be problematic if the voice of the majority is not morally correct. There are numerous instances in the U.S. History where instances in the U.S. history where the minority had a stronger, stronger moral stance on specific issues of policy. From the Japanese inter Inter internment camps to the concept of manifest destiny. It is clear that the majority isn't always in the right. Yet, because the government rules from the majority, that is the course of action that is take, taken. Now, Representative democracy is all over. Now, now, now let's look at theocracy. Theocracy. A theocracy is a government which features a religious person being or be person being or I just the highest ruler with within its structures. The population might elect a president, but the president would be viewed as required to report to God. 
This type of structure tends to support the majority position within the country and allow for less overall societal conf conflict within that majority because everyone believes something similar. Theocracy a, theoc a theocracy is a government based on religious principles. A theocracy could do amazing things for people in need. If a theocracy were to follow the edicts of the bo holy books to the letter, it could change the world in several incredible ways. Hunger could be eliminated because neighbors would share that with, with neighbors. Everyone could have access to proper health care. No one would be living in poverty, poverty unless they consensually chose to do so. There would be more helping hands available to those in need. There is no longer a need to find a compromise. Sorry, compromise. Because the majority is already on the same page for governmental policies and procedures. There is less time spent trying to find a, com a compromise between ideas. Even if there is a conflict between two groups, the supreme overseeing the government would have the final say. People would come together, pray or worship and come away with a common goal. Theocracy disadvantages. First, minority groups are not often tolerated within a theocracy. Theocracies demand conformity. conformity. One may be allowed uh, to believe in a variation of the overall religious beliefs that form the backbone of the government but not in something completely different in a christian theocracy being a baptist or a catholic might be allowed but being a muslim may not be allowed it is a governmental structure which encourages discord in a theocracy because a re religious being or good is the head of the government discord in is invited within the population these re religious ideas are supernatural even if a human is representing themselves as a god so it becomes difficult to question the ideas that become from such a governmental structure if you question the government you question god and that's a battle that battle the faithful within a theocracy will not allow someone to win business Business can operate only if they follow the same religious principles. Hobby Lobby uses the federal government over the mandate to provide insurance that included birth control because it went against the organizational beliefs. In theocracy, the ability to sue would be limited. If a business was not following the mandates of the government, then their activities would be against what the supreme being in charge would want and the government would simply shut the business down. Fourth, it is selfish. People within a theocracy are looking out for their best interest first. They want to work on their own salvation before trying to help someone else achieve success. That is why this form of government often fails. The humans at the top of the government have the most power to ensure their own salvation. So, they work on that before they help the rest of the people. 